Hey guys, Monty coming to you from my blog, workwithmonty.com. I'm so glad you stopped by to check this post out. If you see any value in it or, you know, you want to comment or feel free to send me a voicemail on the right-hand side of my blog, I'd love to hear from you. Today we're really going to dig in, okay? We're going to dig in on, on why your customers procrastinate. And we're not talking about procrastination from a personal standpoint, you know, whether or not you're getting busy and really, really working the working the system and, and building your business. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about why your customers procrastinate because, to be honest with you, they do. And there are several reasons why they procrastinate, and it may not be your fault. All right. So whatever it is that your customers are doing, whether it's fear, whether they're they're holding back for for monetary issues, whatever the case may be. You know, don't take their hesitation personally, all right, but but you do have the chance, you know, to help somebody, you know, find a reason why your product is the best or, you know, find out what the value is in your product. And let's let's get into this. So, you know, there are five important reasons, in my opinion, on why your customers won't pull the trigger and how to overcome it. Number one, there's a fear in making a decision. All right, if somebody somebody's fearful about, you know, making the decision to come into your business or buy your product, you need to be patient. You need to ask questions. All right. You need to listen to what they're saying to find out what it, what the real reason is why they're not joining your program or buying your products. All right. Most common fear of a customer is that they're afraid of making a bad decision. You know, sometimes in the past, you know, especially in this network marketing space, people are buying products and services and, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to find their way and they, they've bought something that just didn't work. Now, listen, Everybody has a product or service, you know, that works, all right? If it didn't work, they wouldn't market it and people wouldn't be successful. So, you know, you have to clearly show the customer, you know, that there's an entirely different situation with what you have to offer. Offer the benefits, all right? And find out what in the past that, you know, if they bought something, why it didn't work for them. So these are a couple little tidbits, you know, on, on how, to, how to get into the customer and get the fear out of them. Find out what they're, what's holding them back. All right, now, number two, they may not trust you, okay? Maybe maybe they've been told over and over again not to trust the salesperson. You know, there are tons of people who think like this. Unfortunately, you know, there are some people who, who scam. They do, and we're in a space where this is, this is constantly what people, what people see. You know, understand that you're a sales professional, all right? You're not a, you're not a scammer. All right, but you have to build rapport. You have to understand. You have to pay attention to your customers. You know, be courteous to them. Say thank you and you're welcome. And, you know, lead them to, to your product and or your service. You know, ask their needs. Ask what they want. Ask what they desire. And most importantly, respect their time. All right. You know, if, if you're going to send them to a demonstration, you know, just just respect their time and, and make sure that you're not pushing it on them. You know, ask them, ask permission. And I'm telling you, they will trust you. They will trust you. You know, if you're pushing stuff on them, they're not going to trust you. Believe me, they're not. I've been doing this a long time. I've been a, I've been a salesperson, you know, for many years. And trust me, it's it's all about mindset. It's all about making them putting them on a pedestal, not yourself. You know, Another another big big thing here is number three. They actually want to talk to you. Okay, they actually want to talk to you. Have you ever considered, you know, that your customers actually enjoy talking to you and want to know and, and need to know the process? You know, need to know that you're an all around good good person, right? If you sense that it's easy to rapport easy rapport with your customers is a part of what they're buying as it should be, take a few moments to let them know that they're not just investing in a product or service. They're establishing a, a relationship with you. Right? Not the products. You know, make yourself available. You know, make your customers feel like they're not just getting a product and they're joining a, a family of happy people or or happy clients. You know, make it a family thing. You know? This this may help you out, and I I really hope it does because if if you grasp some of these concepts, it's going to help you. It's going to get buyers. It's going to get people to follow you because ultimately people follow you, not businesses. All right, they actually want your attention, right? Now here's here's a big one that sometimes it's very hard to overcome, and you know it's it's when when people start to compare and contrast. All right, when they start talking to you, oh well. You know, their products tell me to do this and, you know, their products, you know, do that and this and that. 
You need to ask questions about what the competition is doing. How are they presenting their information? All right, you need you need to be certain that both products are considered on the same basis. You know, while, while let's look at it, let's look at this for example. All right, let's say you're bidding against another competitor. All right, it's never inappropriate to ask how the information is presented. All right, ask ask what the competition has done. Ask what you know what it, what is their service going to do that mine is not, or what is their product going to do that mine can't do. You know, does that make sense? So when somebody starts to compare apples, you know, apples to oranges, you know, really dig in, find out what the competition's doing, and you need to know what your competition's doing. You absolutely need to know. It's essential in business. All right, know the competition. All right. Now, number five, you know, they they really don't care about the product or service you have to offer, and this is common. And you know, it, it's when you're pushing a product onto someone, they're not going to buy it if you're just pushing the product. All right, but put a different spin on it. You know, they may not they may not care about the product or service. You know, so what do they do? They just procrastinate making the decision either way. You need to pre be prepared to build value. All right, show the customer what's in it for them. You know, if you're talking, if you have a product and, um, you know, dig in, dig into their family. Say, you know, maybe, maybe so and so, maybe your son or daughter or maybe your aunt and uncle can really benefit from this product. Show the value. And, you know, you really, you really might hit a trigger. You might hit a trigger point. So, you know, just, just picture the delight and excitement of, of a customer where you show value in, in a, um, in a product or service that might help somebody with an ailment or that might help somebody that's who, who's financially distressed. Dig in. You know, it's building rapport. This is customer relationships. So, you know, that's a little bit, little bit of what I have on com customer procrastination. And it's really what matters in, in any business, especially home-based business. The customer is number one. All right. So I hope you got some value out of this. Again, please feel free to comment, post, you know, find me, email me. I'm, I'm here to help, all right? I'm here to show you guys the way. Feel free to click on the link if you found me on YouTube, like me on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you guys, all right? So with that said, I'm out, and um, Monty from New Jersey, and I will be talking to you guys soon. Take care.